Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be starting lessons, um, or chapter 7, lesson 7.0, part 1. And we're just going to talk about how to measure and draw angles. A little bit of review on the first part, what are acute, obtuse, and right angles. And then the last parts are the parts in the middle will be how to measure and how to construct. We are going to be writing down nine things in our, today in our notes. Let's go ahead and get started to see what they are. So the first thing we want to make sure, whenever we, we're going to be using a protractor to measure and construct angles. So whenever you're doing that to measure angles, you always want to make sure the center of the protractor is aligned with the vertex or the dot. So there's, all, there's going to be a dot or the center of the protractor, and you want to align that with the angle's vertex. And you also want to align one of the angle's um, rays with this with the bottom line or the starting line of your protractor notice here we're starting at zero degrees and over here we're starting at zero degrees when you notice that you have when you get your protractor out you're going to see that you can be starting at zero or 180 degrees you always want to start measuring your angle at zero degrees um, just so you know that you're getting an accurate reading so this one over here on the left is 20 degrees and that one is an acute angle the one over here for letter B is in between 130 and 140. That's going to be 135, and that's going to be an obtuse angle. You do want to be careful as well because, like over here in option A, you can't see it really well probably on your screen, but you notice that 20 also shares the line with 160 degrees. This does not look like a 160 degree angle, so you're obviously going to be choosing the degree measurement 20 degrees. The same thing is true over here in letter B. Letter B is in between 50 and 40, so that means it could also be 45 degrees. But when you have an obtuse angle, that's got to be bigger than 90 degrees, so you're not going to choose that one. Instead, you're choosing the 135. So just make sure you're being careful of what degree measurements you're choosing. Um, the first four things you're going to write down are these. Acute angles have less than 90 degrees. Obtuse, obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees. A right angle is 90 degrees and a straight angle is 180 degrees. Go ahead and take time now to pause real quick and copy these things down. Once you're done, click play so we can see the rest of our notes. So the next part is we're actually gonna use these protractors to um, measure the angles. So once again, you're gonna be looking at this vertex right here and aligning that vertex with the center of your protractor. So I'm going to scoot that over and line the dot with the dot on my protractor. And I'm also going to make sure the line on my protractor is also lined up with the ray, this straight line down here. I'm going to notice that I've got um, zero starting here, and it goes all the way to 70 degrees. It can also be 110 degrees, but we know that it's going to be 70 degrees because it is less than 90 degrees, which means it's an acute angle. So I would measure 70 degrees and then say it was acute. Same thing here. You just take your protractor, line it up over the vertex, and notice that it is what degrees? That's right, it's 90 degrees. That one is exactly a right angle because it is 90 degrees. Notice with this one, it looks like it's gonna be obtuse since it's larger than 90 degrees. So when you're classifying these, you can always go ahead and write what you know it's going to be. This is obtuse. And this one is in between 60 and 70. It's not gonna be 65 though, because 65 is less than 90 degrees. This one has to be bigger. So we're gonna say this one's between 110 and 120, which is 115 degrees, okay? And then, so just make sure for number five in your notes, when you're measuring an angle, you're going to match up the vertex and the ray, okay? Remember, vertex is the dot, and ray is the line, okay? Go ahead and pause now so you can write that down. If you need to draw the picture that goes with that, you can. Um, just make sure you know what vertex and ray look like. Once you're done, click play, and we're actually going to try to draw some angles in our notes. So the first thing you need to know about drawing an angle is you're always going to start with drawing a ray, and then you're going to center the protractor at the end of the ray, mark your degree measurement with your protractor, and then connect the mark to the end of the ray. I'm going to show you kind of how to do this um, on here, and then you're going to be practicing a few by yourself. So the first one we're going to start off is number six in your notes with 55 degrees. The first thing you start off by doing is drawing a vertex, an array, 
And the next thing is, is you're going to actually use your protractor. So I'm going to, if you would, you put your protractor over your, what you're drawing, you should have been. And I'm trying to find 55 degrees. So what I'm going to be looking for is something in between um, 50 and 60, and it's right here to make it an acute angle. You basically just draw a tick mark where your degree measurement is, and then you move it out the way, and then you're going to connect your tick mark to the vertex. You will be able to use the straight edge of your protractor. I'm not able to use the straight edge of my one just because it'll pick up weird stuff on the touch screen. Um, but when you use your straight edge, your line will be much more straight than mine. And then you're, once you're done drawing it, you just label it. Okay? So for number seven, if you want to pause the video real quick and try this one by yourself to see if you can do it, once you're done, click play, and you can see if it's matching mine. So first thing you should have done for number seven, draw your ray with your vertex, and then match up your ray and your vertex with your protractor. We're going all the way on the other side to 160 degrees. So 160 will be over here. This is obviously an obtuse angle. I drew my tick mark. And then again, you can use the straight edge of your protractor to connect to make sure it is a straight line. But yours should almost be um, a straight line because 160 is pretty close to 180. 180, remember, is a straight angle. So that one should look a lot like you, a lot like what you have on here on the screen. Um, if yours is flipped around the other way, if it's opening up the other way, that's the same thing. Just make sure as long as it's measuring 160 degrees, you can always redo and check your work to make sure that your angle is measuring 160 degrees like this one is. Number eight, go ahead and pause and then try it. Once you're done, click play. All right, so once again, we start with your vertex and ray. Line it up. We got 85 degrees. This one's going to be slightly smaller than 90 degrees. So 85 is right about here. So it might look really close to 90 degrees, and that's okay because it's really close to it. And then your tick mark and connecting it. So it looks almost like it's, it's a little bit after 3 o'clock because it mainly what your 85 degrees should look like or a little bit before 9 o'clock, whatever way you drew it. The last one in your notes you're going to try is 180. Obviously this one is going to be a straight angle, but go ahead and just practice to see what that looks like with a protractor. Here we go. So I've got my vertex and ray lined up, and then I'm just going to mark 180. It looks like you're marking a zero, but really you're counting all the way from over here around. So you went 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, all the way to 180 for that. Let's just erase this. And then when you connect it, you'll have a straight line. Sound good? So that's going to be all that we have for our notes today. Just make sure you have your nine things written down. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we will...